So first off, congratulations on the uh, Celebrate Israel Parade to you as well. Um, how do you think it went today? It was my first. Mm -hmm. I think it was amazing. It's an opportunity to say Kol HaKavod and Yishar Koach um, to Gideon that sat here before me and um, headed the organization that went beautifully. It, it was very energizing and we were just, I was just at another event where I said that um, COVID wasn't good for uh, the uh, Jewish-Israeli relationship and it wasn't good for the American-Israeli relationship. And it was a long two years and parade-wise it was three. And seeing all those people outside was very energizing. Excellent, thank you. So the next thing I wanted to address was uh, the death of longtime Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akleh, which continues to make waves because there is just so much uh, pain on all sides of this. Uh, you know, as of Friday, a group of House Democrats are asking the FBI to investigate. We have New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez Thursday uh, speaking out about this on Instagram, blaming Israel and uh, blaming the healthcare system in the United States for money going to Israel. What is your reaction to this? Um, have you had a chance to speak with her? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Checking sure. on that, because I no. know you said you wanted to meet with her. She, uh, <laughs> look, I usually don't uh, dip into names and um, don't interview that, to that um, extent. I, I did it anyhow this time, mm -hmm. and I tweeted about it because I thought that it needs, there's a certain level of accountability needed by elected officials. And, uh, okay. The first day when everyone jumped to conclusions, that's a day when people jump to conclusions and that's when they're in the legitimate area of using their agendas and policies. But now we're a few weeks into it. It's clear that no one knows where it came from and still blaming Israel is extremely responsible um, uh, on her side. And um, also the House uh, decision to investigate is something that theoretically, theoretically we have no problem with. We want to conduct an investigation from day one. We want to do it with the Palestinian side and with the third side to get to the bottom of the truth. We've said that from the get-go. Uh, we're just not getting any uh, cooperation. So in, in light of not getting any cooperation and the fact that everyone knows that that's the situation, I would expect these elected officials to point their request to the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. What's your message? What do you want people to know who continue to be upset about this and blame Israel. What, what is your message to them? Being upset about uh, the death of anyone is legitimate. Uh, journalists shouldn't, shouldn't be, lose their lives covering uh, conflict zones. It is a conflict no, zone, though. And um, it, it is okay and legitimate and acceptable or ex expectable to be very shaken up about it, but look at the facts before you determine um, who you think did it. Mm -hmm. And if you think you, you know better than the Palestinian forensic experts, then uh, that comes from um, other motivations and agendas. Mm -hmm. Is there any update um, from Israel's side of things on the investigation right now? Not to the best of my knowledge. Okay. And I know when you tweeted about this, just in general, you said this comes at a time when anti-Semitism is on the rise. What do you as Consul General, what is, what is part of your work here to combat that anti-Semitism being on the rise in New York, well, New Jersey? First of all, I think the most important thing, looking at that, uh, which we try to do is the connection between uh, the anti-Zionist, anti-Israel um, rhetoric between that and anti-Semitic uh, incidents in the United States because uh, people are very in smartly separated between them, although they result in the same thing and many times they derive from the same place. And we try as much as we can um, to explain that on campuses, to managements of universities, on social media and with elected officials to a certain extent uh, to a s of success. It's not very high yet, and I hope uh, it becomes higher in the near future. Right, you've been doing a lot of visits to universities, right? 
Tell yeah. me about that. What, why do you want to connect with college students? Because I think that that's where we're, honestly, I think that when you look at anti-Semitism in the United States, when you look at where it starts, and when you look at our biggest problems as Israel, that, even before that, but college is the number one um, breeding ground for this new kind of anti-Semitism. And it is the one place where young people, Jews, uh, that reach it have to suddenly, for the first time, choose between their Jewish identity and Israeli identity and between other things they believe in. Uh, and if they reach there without a strong enough backbone and a strong enough understanding of the identity and of history, then they lack certain tools that allow them to, to say, we can, I can be both. Mm -hmm. And then um, the outcome of that is either frightened Jewish kids running around the campus, not saying the things they want, or worse than that, um, seeing, they start seeing Israel as a, as a, a burden, mm -hmm. socially, politically, and uh, I don't think we can allow that because it, it doesn't come from an ideological place, but from, from another place. Mm -hmm. uh, you came to New York in October. Uh, what's been your favorite thing so far? <laughs> the end of the winter. <laughs> the fact that it's not cold anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, well, today was bananas, but generally, if it's not as hot as it was today, mm -hmm. then uh, the, the, it, coming from Tel Aviv, the climate in the city very much affects my matzav uh, ruach. Mm -hmm. So now it's become much better. All I right. love the park. You love the park, It's my favorite right, park, right. yeah. Well, thank you so much. The sun came out for us today, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much for having thank me. You. Thank you for all the organizers. Yeah. <laughs>